Welcome back to another episode of No Not Them, where we discuss the last 30 days in Tinseltown. Now let's clear the air right off the bat. Despite the confusion, we are not esteemed EGOT winner Mike Nichols or R&B artist Chris Brown. Nope. Instead, you're stuck with writer-director from upstate New York, Mike Nichols, and a podcast host hailing from the same town that proudly birthed Senator Ted Cruz. Michael is here to sprinkle a dash of actual insight amidst the chaos, while I am poised to unleash a torrent of opinions so unfiltered they make the tap water look fancy. So fasten your seatbelts, folks, because we're about to barrel through Hollywood like a bull in a china shop, but with less grace and more awkward apologies. Grab your popcorn and gray brace yourself as we navigate the waters of showbiz together. Will we emerge unscathed? Well, let's just say our survival is as uncertain as a actor's career after starring alongside Nicolas Cage. Let the madness commence. Michael, how are you? Who starred alongside Nicolas Cage? In every movie that he's ever done? Everyone. Hence why we don't hear about them. <laughs> I love Nicolas Cage. Oh, I do too. You just don't hear about any of the actors he starred alongside. <laughs> No, I feel like the one in National Independence, what the Stealing the Independence, what's it called? What's, what's his National name? National Treasure. The one who's a hardcore uh, Republican Trump guy who played the father. And they, there you have it, my friends. Mr. John Voigt is not the name he could think of. So therefore, I'm just putting this out there. For the next 10 minutes when he's about to boast about winning for the fourth year in a row for the Academy Awards Oscar predictions, he did not remember the name John Voigt. Anyway. Rock Michael, and roll, are diva. How are you? <laughs> How's life? How's liberty? How's the pursuit of happiness? Happy, I happy, am... Happiness. Wow, words. Um... <laughs> been a long Good. week okay man it has full moon uh we have a total eclipse of the heart coming up like april 8th it's just been a lot but how's life how's uh, everything been since the last time we sat down prior to the oscars it's been great it's been good it's been trucking along moving forward it's it's just going work has been crazy but that's because work is always kind of crazy Works work. How right? are you? What are you doing? What's life? Uh, not bad. We're gearing up for our big travels here in two weeks. So we are off on the road to Manitoba and Saskatchewan in El in Canada. So we're going to be taking two weeks and going on the road. And then we're going to get back and we're heading up to Alaska that uh, the month after. And then a month after that in June, I will be in beautiful New York, New York. And we will finally be in the same, pro I was going to say same province. Province. <laughs> you have the province of Massachusetts, so don't even try that. <laughs> the, the, pro the province of what? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Province town. There you go. We do have province town. There you go. I got mixed up. So I'm gonna. I've just got lots of travels coming up. So this is like sort of my last few like sane days before I head back out on the road, but. We could sit here and talk about ourselves for a half hour, but people don't tune in for that. People tune in for our unfiltered, un, un, uneducated for myself guesses and what's going on in the entertainment industry. But I think we have to start with the big story. And that is, as I so eloquently said at the top of the show, four times later... He is the winner once again. Q, the winner takes it all by ABBA because God forbid Chris actually gets anything right. Congratulations, man, on another successful win. But it was close this year. You have it to was. <laughs> it was very close. I think it was we it was by one point, I think, between you and I. Two. No, I'm more mad that my friend Garrett at my party, he full stop just watched one YouTube video, not a single movie, just one YouTube video and managed to beat me. And I'm like, you motherfucker. He goes, <laughs> I wanted to win this year. And I go, but you didn't do any of the work. He goes, I watched a YouTube video. You have to watch all of them. <laughs> That's not the fun of it. The fun he, of it is- Did he get all of them? He, I think got three more than I did or two more than I did. It was something very minis minimal. Um, and mm -hmm. it was, and it was like, while we were like the few that we had different um 
it was like if it was my other pick. So uh, okay. if I had picked my other pick, I we would have tied or I would have won. Um, but very few categories he got wrong. And I'm like, you rat bastard. So I think we have to talk about the big sort of uh, surprise on Oscar night. And it, it's one that uh, we mm-hmm. hedged our bets mm-hmm. and we went the wrong way because we said that as as traditions go, as go hair and makeup, go best actress or best actor. And yep. we knew that it was not going to be best actor. So we hedged our bets and we said, this is the year that it's going to buck the trend. And best actress is not going to go to poor things. It's actually going to go to Killers of the Flower Moon and uh, Lily Gladstone. And that's who we chose. We chose Lily Gladstone to take the Oscars. But I think everyone in that room was as shocked as we were when they announced that Emma Stone had won her second conse- or second uh, Oscar. Including Emma Stone. That's what I mean. Everyone in that room was shocked as hell that they won that Oscar. Yeah, even afterwards, because I watched a lot of the Emma Stone interviews she gave after she won. She just looked very confused to be where she was. Like, I don't think she didn't want, I mean, everybody wants to win, but she didn't want to she wanted it to go to lily she'd been very supportive of lily the whole time she really didn't campaign too much at all for it it was a little shocking that she did get it i mean and i've seen a lot of folks on uh, like it wasn't a bad win like both were incredible i think just everyone was hoping it was going to go lily gladstone and it did not can't win them all right like no. Will Lily Gladstone be nominated again? I can see it. I hope uh, so. Nah, that's the other issue with Hollywood the way it is right now, right? It's d- does someone like a uh, actress like Lily Gladstone have the staying power? Because looking back on people who have been nominated, who were so close, who did not win, you you don't see their career anymore. And I'm, I'm thinking about back to, and I forget the actress's name and you're going to, you're going to yell at me after me complaining that you didn't know John Voight's name, but uh, the actress who played precious in Sapphire. Gabourey Sidibe. Yeah. Like you, you see her from time to time, but you don't see her on the big screen anymore. She's doing more TV shows rather than more uh, sort of Oscar nominated films. So I'm hoping that Lily doesn't go down the same path that she does. But don't get me wrong. A job is a job. And a lot of people are just happy that they're in Hollywood compared to where they were five years ago. So I don't know where this could happen, but I see, a, I hopefully see a bright future for Lily. Yeah. I mean, I love, 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 love Gabourey Sidibe. I think she's an incredible actress and I love the work that she does on TV. I think that it's just the right project hasn't come along for her. Um, I think that if this is a path, like if Lily Gladstone wants to stick with movies, then there's definitely a path for her. But like, is there specific roles? And like, is there a film being produced? Cause like Cynthia Erivo is great she really hasn't been given many movie opportunities because they're just not writing things for her. Um, Thankfully she has a pretty big film coming up and we're probably going to see her take another swing at getting an Oscar. Um, But it's just, it's a weird, the Oscars are a weird thing because you can see folks get nominated multiple, multiple, multiple times and never win. Like Glenn Close. Annette Benning, also uh, <laughs> Diane Warren. Uh, do, oh, did you read about that controversy afterwards? That she what? was pissed. So, okay. So there was a lot of controversy around the whole, uh, uh, Al, not Al Pacino. Was it Al Pacino? Yeah. No. Is it Al Pacino at the end of the Who announced movie? Best Picture? Who did not read the names of the actual. Nothing. Okay. Okay. But if you go back, if you Google Diane Warren, she was pissed off that Ariana Grande and I forget the, uh, I don't know. Cynthia Riva. Cynthia Riva didn't read off the names of the songs prior to announcing the best winner of best song at the Oscars. 
So they had all performed, they had all been introduced, but they did not actually announce the song names prior to saying the Oscar goes to. Like Al Pacino did for the movies, because all the movies were given that like 30 second, here's the best picture, 30 second clip. He didn't announce, but he was, it looked like he was drunk and he just went crazy and didn't actually announce anything. I'm pretty sure he didn't even say, and the Oscar goes to. I think no, he, he said, didn't. He said, he like, he just said, I see Oppenheimer. Yeah. So there's a lot that a lot of people were pissed off about that. But a lot of people were, well, Diane Warren was pissed off about the whole song snub as well because no one read the names of the song. And I kind of agree that if you're pissed off at the best picture, you have to be pissed off at best song as well because they didn't read them off. So I think for best song, that was a, not on the teleprompter because they were very clearly reading the teleprompter whereas al pacino just went off the fucking rails well you get someone like al pacino you're going to get someone off the rails so even if you don't put it on the teleprompter you can't be you can't you can't accuse someone of doing something wrong and then at the same time say that something someone who did the exact same thing wrong is right even if it's not on the Go but ahead. it's but that's the thing. They're reading off a teleprompter. They're on a script. They're following the script to the T. So in yeah. that instance, you had you had you can't say Ariana Grande and Cynthia Erivo are in the wrong. You have to say why didn't the network include this in the script? Exactly. It's, or with Al Pacino, it's Al Pacino. What the fuck, girl? Yeah, I'll agree with that. So I, I just I find it quite interesting that there was a lot of controversy around uh, Al Pacino not mentioning it and. I think next year we just do. I will admit, uh, next year they they won't have Al Pacino read the best picture. I don't care; <laughs> it's probably not going to happen. But I will admit that Jimmy Kimmel did a fantastic job hosting. Oh, he usually does. He, but he usually it's hit and miss. But he was very quick on a lot of the comments this year. So uh, the one thing that I found hilarious, and I didn't see it coming, but my husband was the one who quipped it. Um, when Emma Stone won and she walked off the stage, he makes his little joke that says, please make sure that envelope goes into the garbage or far away from the next presenter. Because yeah. as anyone who remembers, last time Emma Stone, <laughs> we had a best picture controversy. And look, we had a best picture controversy this year again. And we just didn't name the correct anyway. Like uh, Emma Stone, I think is the seventh person to, or seventh woman to join the two Oscar club. Yeah. Which is a club that zero men are in. Mm, no. No, there are zero men that have two Oscars in Jack terms Nicholson. of acting. In term no, I don't think he does. Yeah. Hold on. I'm looking Jack it up. Jack Nicholson. I'm, everything I read said that I think they, you're saying the best in the same category. No. Oh no, he does have three. What the fuck? Yeah, he he has one for uh, as good as it gets. He has one for uh, China something. Oh my god, what are the three that he has it for? Uh, he has it for one flew over the cuckoo's nest, term of endearment, and as good as it gets. Okay, yeah. So I I knew that there was I knew that there was more. I knew there was a man. And fuck, oh, and Tom Denzel what? Denzel Tom Washington Hanks, has back two. to back. Tom Hanks got it back to back for Philadelphia and Forrest Gump. Yeah, and Denzel has it for Glory and Training Days. I don't know where I read that. Clearly, I'm out to fucking lunch. Yeah, who knows? Anyway, um, was there any big surprises for you that night, though, besides uh, Emma Stone? Mm, definitely, Emma Stone was the big surprise. Um, can I can I oh. ask you? Can I ask you a serious question? A serious sure. question here. Do you think if they voted for best song at the Oscars, I'm just Ken would have won? Yeah. Billie Eilish sucked at the Oscars, right? Like, I don't I'm think that she sucked. I think that the song it, is great. I just think that, and I think it's a better song than I'm just Ken. I think just Ken, I'm just Ken is more entertaining. And when you're watching it on like an award show, it's a different situation because Billie Eilish sounded great. It just was boring to watch because it's yeah. not big and flashy. She sounded great. She sounded almost identical to the record. It like there it was pitch. It was pitch perfect. Like is I, that I think, her second win? Yeah. Okay. Because she won for um, 
the Bond. James Bond. Yeah. Which yeah, always I, wins. Yeah. Oh, never bet against James Bond, even though you did. Well, I, I just don't like Adele or Sam Smith or Billie Eilish. Like, literally every time... And that's the thing you can, I'm all for if someone says, you know, Billie Eilish, not for me. I just, I don't agree that it was bad. I think it was just boring to watch for a big award show, especially when all of the other songs were like bigger and more entertaining. I'll agree on that one. Um, Oppenheimer was the big winner though, which we anticipated prior to going into this. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy that my Godzilla won. God bless Godzilla and all of Godzilla minus one. My friend who came to my party, he was only there for Godzilla and only there to support Godzilla. And he was, he walks in, he goes, I'm mad at you. And I go, excuse me. He goes, you didn't vote for Godzilla. And I go, no, I didn't. I voted for the creator. He goes, how dare you vote against Godzilla? And I go, I'm not voting against Godzilla. I'm just voting for the creator. And he goes, how dare you? And I'm like, okay, listen, if it wins, it wins. I think it has a great shot. So I am glad that it won. Oh, I forgot to ask. Uh, so how did you like Anatomy of a Fall? I lo- oh, we had talked about it. It was Zone of Interest. I never got zone, to it. Zone, zone of Interest. How did you like it? Never got to it. Oh, okay. Never mind then. Never mind. I, it was, I just never could find it. And I didn't want to pay for it. And I was like, you know what? I'm good. You won't pay for that, but you'll pay for a crown that's made out of leather. <laughs> sure will. Um, but it won for Best Sound and I had not watched it. So lucky. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> it's a war movie. It's a it's a German Holocaust movie. I should have a, a Jewish Holocaust movie. I should have put my bet on that one. Um, overall, though, I, there wasn't really many big hiccups or big surprises. No. The big like the big takeaway was Oppenheimer's good. Barbie only got one nom- one win. Literally only one win in the entire thing. So. Which that I'm a little shocked that it did not get costumes. Who got costumes again? That was Poor Things, right? Poor Things. Poor Things won a lot more than I thought it was going to. Um, I think a lot of the places where I slipped up with my picks were like the random one-off-y categories like documentary, short, um, animation, I think. No, I did get animation because I voted for John and Yoko. Yeah, but, but I did not get, get best pick best. Yeah, which I am really actually. That's what I was shocked by is the boy in the heron winning over Spider Man. I know I didn't necessarily love Spider Man, but the animation style is usually what they go by, and Spider Man was winning all over town. So I'm I'm not mad at it winning. I'm just a little shook. And speak of a second male two time winner in, in a category is now he's not an actor. Oh, sorry. He's not. He's it's which good for him though. I mean, it's, I'm sorry, but he's a voice actor, so yes, he is an. Does actor. he? Ha- is he voice he characters a, in his? In some of the original, older ones, not like the newer oh, ones. Oh, so. oh! I just don't know enough about the um, Studio Ghibli franchise. Yeah. yeah, I like it. I I'm impressed. I I I didn't think number two was going to win. I know number three is going to win uh, across the spider verse or whatever it's called now or into the universe. Or I know the third one will probably be a banger. It usually is right. Usually the third movie is always the one that gets more yeah. accolades. So I can imagine this one is going to probably see a lot more uh, Academy Awards than previously. I also have to say, I gave you so much shit about you picking the last repair shop just because it was Canadian, and it won. So you know what, Mazel Tov! I, and, I, and can we you a say how shit. how cute that little kid was walking up to that fucking podium? Because that was probably one of the best things of that night. That little girl just shot tang her way down that runway, going, "Look at me, mom." I was, I was like, God damn it. I, and of course my friend is like, oh yeah, I watched a YouTube video and he picked it because I'm like, shut up, Garrett. <laughs> so let's put it this way. Don't watch YouTube around, unless you're watching this show. Don't watch YouTube to make your prediction. <laughs> I, I, if, if he had been like, I watched like three or four of them. And then I was like, you know what? I don't have time. I would have been like, you know what? Sure. This motherfucker watched zero 
he didn't even try. He rolled up to my party and he said, oh, thank you for the prize. Top billing me. How, how'd your husband do? He was not, he's never last place. Okay, good for him. And he always does two ballots. He always does one where he picks what he thinks should win sh- is and- should win and then one where he thinks it will win but the issue is the one where it's always what should win usually does better than what will win for him and i'm like dude just pick one he goes no i'm hedging my bets i go no you just want to put everything onto one like you just want to be able to vote for two things so my husband didn't watch any of it he literally went by what was on the screen at the time and what he was feeling he did better than me <laughs> <laughs> Literally during the Oscars, he was making predictions. He's like, "Oh, that one sounds nice. Oh, I, 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 I know her. I know." Her. <laughs> like, you Did know he know watch? Me? I thought he watched some of them with you. He watched some, but he watched it like I watch his stuff, right? Like, oh, I, so he watched it like this. Yeah, and I watched Judge Judy like that as well. <laughs> it's the way the world works. Um, but overall, it's, it was another fantastic year in films. It should be a fun year heading into 2025. Uh, let's see what uh, this year worth of movies has in store. And it sounds like it's going to be a very tumultuous ride for a lot of movie industry studios because a lot of people are cutting back because no one is spending like they used to or they're trying to put quality over quantity. into Which this. I appreciate into the theaters and i do appreciate that can we just talk about marvel for a second we didn't have this on the list but disney has been fucking the pooch here with marvel over the last probably about two three years and i and i don't say that light lightly because there's some quality stuff that they put out but i i'm sick and tired that i have to watch 12 things to understand a show now so Thank you, Bob Iger, for understanding that not everyone wants to watch 12 things to watch a movie. So here's to you. Cheers. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i kind of, I'm and not I'm t- running to go watch Marvel. And I'm, t- and I'm done with the fact that, okay, I understand that James Gunn is taking over the DC universe and James Gunn is this like nerd messiah for a lot of people, but... Stephen Amell, who played Green Arrow in the Arrow universe on the WB, came out recently in an interview on a podcast. I forget what show it was, or it might have been during one of his Comic-Con meetings. He said, stop talking and just do it. Like, I don't need to know every fucking little move that you're making in the industry. Just make the movie like you used to in the early 1990s and late early 2000s, late 1990s. And just put out the content. Like, I did not know anyone prior to X-Men. And I enjoy that movie still today. Yeah, People are getting inundated with so much information that it's just, it's getting, anyway. Yeah, I mean, the best thing James Gunn has ever done has been Scooby-Doo 1 and Scooby-Doo 2, so. I would say Scooby-Doo 1. I wouldn't say 2. Okay, 2 is also iconic, and I will hear zero (laughs) slander. Challenge accepted. Rowan Atkinson cannot be ever in a movie ever again unless he's Mr. Bean or Johnny English. Um. Oh, The Joker 2 is coming out this year. Yeah, and that has been getting some very good reviews lately. Like, really, really, really good reviews. And I'm hmm. actually looking because, again, you don't hear anything about it because they're making a movie. <laughs> It's a weird concept. You make a movie, you put out said movie. You don't make a script and then talk about said script for 12 years and then put out the movie and go, I feel like I've already seen that movie. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we have waited long enough, but we've got to ask the question. Now, if we had the funding, we would be playing the Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego theme song right now, but we would be changing it to where in the world is Diddy today? Michael, you take this one because I am so confused on why this happened or how this transpired. And I think you even mentioned something to me about this to me like a few months ago, but I just blew it off. Weeks sh- ago. Was it weeks ago? Okay. Anyway, so show you how much my legs. Go ahead. Talk about it. I literally started talking to you about this this morning and you were like, 
what do you mean? What's going on? I don't understand. And I'm like, bro, have you not been following any of this? He goes, God, no. <laughs> I've got things to do. So do I, but this has been wrapping my, I've been down the rabbit hole. Um, so Diddy is currently um, face. I want to say maybe a month or so ago, um, one of his, uh, uh, one of his ex producers, uh, Lil Rod, filed a lawsuit against Diddy, basically accusing him of RICO violations, which is the Racketeering Influenced and Cor Corrupt Organization Act, which is how they take down a lot of mafias and gangs, things like that. El um, yep, and sex trafficking, uh, running a sex trafficking ring, um, murder for hire. Basically, Diddy is the Jeffrey Epstein of uh, the rap world, according to this lawsuit. Um, so it kind of was floating around for a bit uh, and then sort of fizzled out from the news. And then a couple of days ago... Uh, like I think it started Monday night, if I'm not mistaken, or even Sunday yeah. night, Monday morning. Uh, the feds, uh, the federal government and or the feds in L.A., New York State and Miami raided all of Diddy's homes, handcuffed. His children and one in Barbuda and one in Cape Verde, both of which do not have extradition treaties with the United States. Okay, you just cut out there massively. Ooh. So uh -oh. you went no, it was like you're you just froze, like you ought like completely froze there for two seconds. Um, so all I heard was um Diddy did it and then Barbados. <laughs> so okay. take it back to the part where you're saying uh what you were talking about, uh I think you were saying something along the lines of uh so we were talking about Sunday and Monday it being Sunday and Monday. And then that's where it sort of said something and then cut out and then Barbados. Oh, so um, around Sunday, Monday, the feds came forward and basically uh, raided his house in New York state, Miami and LA and handcuffed all his children. And then meanwhile, Diddy is, missing an action, uh, possibly fleeing the country as he was spotted in either Barbuda or Cape Verde, which both do not have extradition treaties with the United States. So he's full stop fleeing the country. And while this is going on, four Jane Doe's and another John Doe have come forward with allegations of sexual assault, sex trafficking, uh, all like racketeering, things like that against Diddy. Um, meanwhile, on Instagram, 50 Cent is running his mouth, having a field day as he has never liked Diddy and is delighted by it and has come forward and accused Diddy of like, uh, killing Tupac and all these other things. Like, it's like a deep rabbit hole. There's now video evidence that's come forward like 10 minutes ago that there's Justin Bieber being assaulted by Diddy. Like, there is a lot of videos and evidence and things that are now kind of coming forward on these alleged crimes Diddy has done. But it's sort For of those like- those who are listening right now, I'd like to just take a moment and say, these are all allegations until proven guilty in the court of law. The the thoughts and the comments that are, that are made by both Mike Nichols and Chris Brown are those of the allegations that are being accused via the internet. For those who are about to sue us, please send your mailing to the Canadian consulate in New York City because they will there for forward it to me. Until then, have yourself an excellent day. But again, these are all accusations. We are not saying they are the truth. That we are yeah. not accusing them, anyone. I just want to make sure that is on the record here. Well, yeah, I mean, it's that's the I thing. Know, I'm not. I'm I not know, saying yes or I, no. I, I'm, I'm not just... saying yes or no. I'm just saying, if anyone's saying yes or no, it's Fifty Cent. He's the one running his mouth for sure saying, yes, it's this. The allegations against Diddy are, are allegations until proven guilty in a court of law. Bum, bum, law and order.
Okay. Dude, I, I did a deep dive in Law and Order, so I, I'm, I'm Jack McCoying the shit out of this stuff. Okay. Anyway, continue. Um, so, yeah. Can, can, can I ask a stupid question? Sure. Diddy's not his name, though, right? Uh, Sean Diddy, Combs. But didn't it go? Was it? Is this Puff Daddy or Puff yes. Daddy? Okay. Puff Daddy. <laughs> Because when you when you said Diddy, I was like, "Who the hell is Diddy?" And then I saw the title, and I was like, "Who's? Why is he saying Diddy and Sean Combs are the same person? Aren't they two different people?" And no. then I went, then I went down a rabbit hole. Like he has changed his mo- name more often than fucking Snoop Dogg did, or Snoop Line, or Snoopy, or Doggy, or D O G Y. Um, yeah, Diddy's wild. Uh, the whole, the whole situation is just very weird. Um, the, especially with the alleged fleeing and now his son coming forward with allegations. It's just a lot of allegations flying around. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, Okay. Hey, you know what? Let's rip the band-aid off since we're since we've gone down this rabbit hole. Let's talk about the other rabbit hole that Michael was on in the last month and a bit, because uh we weren't gonna talk about this because I I, I don't get emotional, but I, I just I think it's there's there's private and then there's entertainment. And I I first want to say that uh my thoughts go out to Catherine, uh, Princess of Wales during her chemo treatments. Uh, someone who's just recently gone through treatment, it is the most horrendous thing that you could ever deal with. Um, I would not ever want to speculate on anyone's medical information, and that's not what the show is about. Uh, but this this show is about Chris Brown and Mike Nichols yelling at each other from time to time and trying to get us off the conspiracy theory bandwagon. Because... During the height of the where in the world is Catherine, Catherine. <laughs> Kate Middleton, uh, Princess of Wales, Michael came to me and said, she's on Mass Singer, don't you know? She's on the Mass Singer! <laughs> it was my favorite and only conspiracy theory that I accepted. The only one. And like some of them were wild, like unhinged. And like, I just, I heard Kate Middleton's on the Mass Singer and then like a clip of the goldfish who has yet to be revealed. And I was like, you know what? That's KDM. That's Miss KDM singing on the mass singer for us. The because royal family real slick. They like, okay. Anyone who's listened to the show knows that I have my issues with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, plain and simple. I saw for I I saw what they were talking about when this whole Kate Middleton thing was going on because uh, whenever Michael got a new scoop on what was going on in the world of Kate Middleton, I heard about it within like ten minutes of that scoop. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm his royal correspondent, but yes. I got yes. it as, as his token Canadian friend. No, <laughs> that's is. not why. It's because you're very obsessed with the royal family and no one else cares as much as you do about the royal family that I know. Wow. That's not shade. It's just a fact. Um, you do like the family. I do like the family. So every 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 few days I'd get random messages of where's this? What's going on? And then I sent him one thing. I sent him one message and it was a newspaper clip and it said Kate and William are concerned about the negative press that there's been going on. This is prior to her announcement. And I got from Michael. I'm going to read what he actually wrote because when I read it, I was like, you unsympathetic asshole. Correct. <laughs> That's literally the first thing I've sent you in who knows how long. And he just goes, no, no. Why would they care? So, oh my God. Why would they care? We do talk a lot. This is this is amazing podcasting. Well, looking up texts from about two weeks ago. Okay, uh, okay, here we go. So I sent him a message, uh, a, a screenshot from Entertainment Tonight, which read: Kate Middleton and Prince William are feeling shock, anger, disbelief, and frustration amid wild, over-the-top speculation and vast conspiracy theories. I said, and I quote, because I. Make sure I wrote this here. That is so 
awful. What? I just read what I said and I'm so awful. I love it. Then I wrote shocked as they would actually care because they probably don't. And it's probably just gossip. And within five minutes, actually seven minutes, because that's how quick it takes him to get back to me. He goes shocked question mark. Then show yourself, Kate. (laughs) Two days later, not even two days, the next morning, Kate shows herself and says, I have cancer. (laughs) And then I post, and then I send him that. And he goes, shit, poor Kate. Still think she's on Masked Singer, though. (laughs) I'm just saying. I, yeah, it was one of those where I, because I also was trying to find the article where it was like them actually saying it. And it was all like, person close to them, this person. I'm like, do they care? Shock, Kate Middleton. Then Hmm. show yourself. Then show yourself, Catherine. Eight hours later, I have cancer after a treatment. Oh, fuck. I hope that it's not cutting in too much time to her mass singer singing. Um, okay, so you people have come to the realization that you and I have we we start with a plan on this every year. Oh yeah, and then it goes off the rails. We are like a bull in the china shop, but with more apologies. So we apologize the random swear words actually no not random swear words but random tangents that we go on um speaking wanted... of bull in a china shop can i segue this i don't know where you're going with this so go for it speaking of bull in a china shop we never talked about ariana grande bull in a china shopping her relationship and ethan slater's relationship okay i don't know who either i know who ariana grande is because she plays someone in something but I don't know. She's the singer with the ponytail that my husband hates. Oh, can we talk about that now? That he hates her? Yeah. No. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. We can mention that he, no, no, we can mention that he hates her. I just can't. No. Um, Yeah. So Miss Ariana Grande broke her marriage up finalized the divorce papers, which was finalized last month or this month, early this month. Um, and then Ethan Slater- Or his... whatever date this is, you're re- listening to this in March when we're recording this. Yeah, that too. <laughs> I know. I don't know actually when it was. I'm just, it's okay. I'm drunk. It's fine. I'm not drunk. I'm really not. I'm unhinged this morning. I'm today. Nope. It's not even morning. And we're not I... even talking about Taylor Swift yet. <laughs> anyways usually um, we get better ratings when michael's unhinged and chris is the same it's true um so miss ariana grande ethan slater they've been like secretly dating allegedly this is alleged because like they've never officially told us but she just released a song called that boy is mine and ethan slater's wife on the record has been like that bitch ariana grande thinks she's real fucking slick she's trash blah 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 and like has been running her mouth about Ariana breaking up her relationship. It's been a wild time in Ethan Slater's world with Ariana. Yes. Oh, I'm just wondering what the hell you're doing because I'm getting really bad background noise of like you tapping on your computer. I'm fidgeting. I'm fidgeting with my, um, uh, a microphone's cord because I'm just so excited about this. (laughs) Topic. Or or it's because last episode I accused you of moving too much and you're trying not to. I'm trying not to. You were like, you move too much. And I go, okay, fine. I won't move at all like a statue. As you still continue to sway. I can't help it. <laughs> yes, you can. I'm gay and Italian. I don't stand a chance. You're gayer than Cher on fucking spring break anyway um yeah she also uh, it's just been wild in the ariana grande ethan is slater she world falling from grace a little bit yeah people were i because mean i don't she know was the, she was the it girl for a while wasn't she for a minute i mean she's never really like she's not she's not that good um she she's fine i like her better than my husband likes her but like 
she i know how much your husband hates her so that's not a big bar to set that's like saying i hate cats because i'm allergic to them so therefore as long as you're not allergic to them and you hate them that's the bar i've set don't tell me you hate you like her more than your husband i think i think she has some good songs I just think in terms of, I've heard her live, I've seen her live multiple times. I don't know if it's 100% there, but it's okay. Are you going to a certain world tour? Ariana? No, Olivia Rodrigo. No, I can't talk about that. I'm really devastated. Why not? Because it's like in the middle of the week for the closest oh. one. And oh, I just don't have enough vacation time and with Cinderella and like all this other stuff going on. I'm like really heartbroken because you know, Olivia Rodrigo's my girl. Sorry. That was, that was, that was off topic. All all my boys are dead or dying. So I can't go see them. anyway. It's all good. Sorry. Rest in peace, Toby. You good? Yeah. Take it away, Mike. I'll talk about um, it for a few seconds. <laughs> yeah, and then Wicked came out, and we still don't know who the goat is. James Gordon. I, I, well, now there's been like subtle little moments where Bo and Yang has spilled his trap and said that it's a, a CGI. He did it on Andy Cohen's Watch What Happens Live. So we like like they don't even know who it is. So it's either the one of the big like thing people are thinking and like conspiracying is that it's Idina Menzel. I was gonna say, do you think you're gonna see the two of them in the original Alphaba and whatever the other one's name is? Glinda. Glinda. Yeah, I think that they're, they're gonna pop up somewhere. Um, I don't know. I'm really excited for the movie. I know people didn't love it or love the trailers they've seen, but I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be fun. I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'll, I'll watch it. I'm not like overly gay Italian for it, but I'm, I, I, I bring it. I, I bring Wow. Wow. This is a PG 13. No, it isn't. <laughs> um, what other is, there's a few other movies that are coming out and they have sort of the trailers that have been dropping recently since the the good old Taylor Swift concert surrounded by the sorry the good old Usher concert surrounded by the football game a few months ago um more and more sort of blockbusters that usually come out during the summer trailers start dropping at this point in time one of them is the new Deadpool and Wolverine movie which oh I'll yeah know the nerds are excited about i'm actually excited about because my canadian boy is in there canadian boy and <laughs> that don't don't I, I i literally the moment i said that i was like oh what the hell was that chris brown <gasps> and it's the full the moon nerd... it's the full and... moon it's affecting everyone <laughs> sorry <laughs> Go for it. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know if you wanted to talk about your astrological sign here or how moon is in Mercury right now and Venus is in second grade. Now hold the fuck on. Oh, we are oh. not about to, but as someone who works in a field with people, I, I I want to fist fight people this this whole week because of this full moon. It's always around a full moon. It turns people into fucking idiots like lunatics like that's i'm not talking about astrology none of that bullshit i'm saying the full moon has a direct correlation ask any nurse ask any teacher ask a social worker we will all tell you the minute the full moon happens you want to fist fight people because they act worse so Michael Keaton's back as Beetlejuice <laughs> and uh, Christina Ritchie is going to be there. Catherine O'Hara in the new Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice trailer dropped, which I'm excited for as a big fan of. I think, uh, yeah. Oh my God. Any other movies or TV shows that you're looking forward to coming back soon or have you been 
excited for that are coming up here soon there michael nichols pate entertainment theater director actor writer all around amazing superstar because you win four oscars in a row to a guy who doesn't fucking care (laughs) i care trust me i cared this year i actually didn't want you to win like next year i will do what gareth did this year i will literally just watch youtube channels (laughs) rude um I don't even know what. No, go ahead. I was going to say, is there any movies that you're looking forward to coming up this year? I don't really know. what's. Oh, Godzilla versus or Godzilla X Kong. The new Godzilla movie with King Kong. Ah, so excited. I will hear zero slander. I am so beyond excited for this movie. No, I literally thought you said something else. And I was like, that sounds like a porn. No, 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 no. Godzilla X Kong. No, it's what it's called. I'm pretty sure it's like Godzilla X Kong. Well, I can imagine. I'm just saying that it just sounds very that the Kong is coming from inside the house. It's Godzilla X Kong, the new empire. Um, Oh my God. It looks like it's out already. Oh, it's tomorrow. Easter weekend. He shall rise just like Godzilla. Have you been watching what? Full sleigh. That whole sentence, full slay. I don't even know what I said. Okay. He will rise Easter weekend. (laughs) Um, So that comes out Friday. So it literally comes out Good Friday. The day day that Jesus got buried, or the day that Jesus got buried, (laughs) got put up on the crucifixion, Godzilla rises out of the water (laughs) and goes... Are you following the sort of controversy around Godzilla and what's going on with like in Japan and America? So I was reading what? an article. I think it was an article either last night or the night before. It was a random, like, I'm not sure if it was like some like variety or something like that, but they're saying how Americans have like heroized Godzilla, where in Japan, like he is always and will always be the villain. And huh. it's just, it takes away from the original concept of what Godzilla was. Because if you watch Godzilla minus one, he is the, he is the bad guy. Yes, in Godzilla. He is. But in all the sort of American made version, whether it be Godzilla 2000 with Matthew Broderick, all the way up to sort of this new empire that they're working with through Godzilla and Apple TV, it's, you're seeing more of a, a sort of legendary pictures, not Apple TV. So I do apologize. Uh, you're seeing a more heroized version. Like he's the good guy and he'll fight alongside all the bad guy uh, with Kong and all the people to save the world, but destroy it at the same time. It's like, okay, I can see it. So controversy. Listen, you either live long enough to see yourself become a villain or live long enough to see yourself become the hero. Just like Loki. Loki is a villain and now all of a sudden he's the hero. Because Tom Hiddleston is hot. So I guess Godzilla is hot. And that's why Godzilla is now the hero. Okay. I'm just going through the list of movies that are coming out. And it doesn't look... Oh, Unfrosted, the Pop-Tart story by Jerry Seinfeld's coming out. That should be fun. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Oh, uh, I love me a Planet of the Apes movie, but like after the first five, they've just kind of all been a mess. So the original five, you mean? I agree yeah. with you. Like the ones from the 70s? I agree wholeheartedly. They're so um, good. The Garfield movie with Chris, Chris Pratt as Garfield, which I spit over and over again bad boys ride or die is coming out this year the crow is coming out this year which has gotten a lot of controversy around that as well Mm. inside out 2 is coming out this year which has again got a lot of controversy around that as well (laughs) oh oh Um, imaginary the new horror movie that one looked pretty good and the quiet place day one is coming out oh wow they're like literally going crazy this year despicable me four uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. The Fantastic Four is the Fabulous Four, not Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four is coming out next year. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really kind of oh, keep up. So there's a few. Hey, the new James Bond is going to be announced here soon, and it's expected to be Aaron Johnson Taylor, the guy off of Quicksilver, and the guy from Craven the Hunter. So, God. God rest uh, Daniel Craig and welcome to the new uh, Johnson era of uh, James Bond. 
Mm. Oh, did you watch Argyle? Have you seen Argyle? Mm. I really liked it. Mm. I read the book. And did you think it stayed true to what it was? Well, it's not. It's the book. So the movie got created and then the book is the first book she wrote in her book series in the movie so it's yeah. like two completely different things i think it's a cool concept i think at times the book felt a little on the juvenile side and it could have been a hundred pages shorter um it just it, it's a cool concept i'm curious to see where they go if they go if they write more books because i know there's do it they're doing more argyle movies but i think Are it's they? more of like yes they're adapting the books that Ellie Conway wrote into the series. It's like a whole thing that it's direction they're going or something. It's, I'm curious. It will be interesting to see for sure. I'm looking forward to it. I'll watch them, but it's not one of those things that I, I'm excited for. What about books? Any new books that you've been reading lately? I just started Sunbringer uh, last night, which is Hannah Kaner's brand new book uh, mm -hmm. in the Fallen Gods trilogy, which I really, really liked. Um, I just read, God, was it was maybe a say. couple of weeks ago, Child Thief uh, by Brahm, and really okay. liked that. It's an older book, uh, 2006, I want to say. It was really incredible. Um, also, Cassandra Clare's book, Swordcatcher, I read. It was fine. Do not... Do not do. Wait, not you read do. Swordcatcher? I own every single one of Cassandra Clare's books. In so my you read bookshelf. Swordcatcher? Yes, I certainly did. I read it the first week that it came out, and I fucking love that book. I hope they adapt it better than they adapt Shadowhunters. So, I felt that there was no romantic chemistry between anyone except for the prince and the Swordcatcher. Can I? Can they, I let you into a little secret? Yes. You've just described every single one of Cassandra Clare's books. Like, are they going to add? Because this is what I hate. I, I like when books are like, oh, everyone's queer and it's fine. And like, you can be queer or whatever. But it's like she brought, she, I hate when people do that and bring it up. And then it goes nowhere. Like it she, was brought she, up. She is, she is the master of that. I, don't do that. If you're going to bring it up and it's going to be a thing, like then have a queer character. Have like, are these two, because there was no fucking chemistry between any of the women and the men in this. It was like, the only one who I was rooting for to get together is the fucking prince and the, the sword catcher. And like from the description on the back, it's what it sounded like. Yeah, and so and was I mis sorely sad. I also felt that was a hundred pages too long. Oh, again, welcome to Cassandra Clare, how she writes. And it was info dumped. It was like these massive, long, like 20 to 40 page chapters with just dumps of information about the world building. And it's like, yes, I'm glad you are building the world. There's a got to be a better way to do this than so, hundreds of pages of nothing. So from what I understand, this is a, I think this is a, her new series that she's going to be working on from what she, yes. like she's, she, so she has three new, three of the last books out of the Shadow Hunter series coming out. I think either this year, next year, and the year after, I'm not 100% sure, or next year, year after, year after that. And, yeah. she, uh, and this Swordcatcher is the new sort of series that she's trying to pick up the mantle and run with. I yes. agree. It's a little bit long wind, but if you go back to the original and I want to make sure I get the name of a city of bones, I think you would say the exact same thing about city of bones. Like you say, a short sword catcher. The, the concern I have with Cassandra Clare, and this has always been my concern with her is it takes about 12 books to get to a part where you're like, okay, now the build up is sort of rectified. And that's where I get a little bit pissy, but I'm in it for the long haul. My husband gets pissy whenever there's a new <laughs> Cassandra Clare book in my house because I have all of them. And he goes, why? I just, I, I, this is the first one I've read. It was fine. I'm curious to read the second one. But if it is anything like this first one where it's just lengthy chapters of dumped information for no reason, I will not be continuing. Um there's a couple of books that I've started that have sequels and series that I'm like, you know what? Don't need to read this. Don't need to do this. This is not fun. Have you fun. finished Sarah J. Mass's series? The A Court of Thorns and Roses series. Yeah. Yes. Not Throat of Glass and not okay. Crescent City. I have zero interest in reading those. And I know right oh. now she's in a bit of hot water. 
for some, I was trying to catch up on it, but just life's busy. And I'm like, I don't really, writing's fine. Yeah, no, I agree. I haven't, I've been, I haven't really gotten any new books lately because A, all the authors that I read, I get them shipped to me by, by my local bookstore because local bookstores are great and they're amazing. So I wait for those local bookstores to send me their local bookstores purchases. And then once I get them, I read them within a day, but there's nothing that the local bookstore has get, gotten in the last few weeks because uh, all the authors that I read just, they like sporadically throughout the year release them. And I'm not one of those people. I can't just pick up a book anymore. I tried to do that last year. It's just this year I found that I was getting way too many books and I would just have that book, like endless book pile on the, my corner shelf. And I was like, Nope, not this year. I know. Mine currently has 20. Yeah. And it's literally the, the fourth month of the year, almost by the time this airs. So that's not me this year. I, I have my series and I'm going to just collect that series and that's it. Well, if you're looking, if you are looking for a book, it's already done. A series, it's already done. It's three books. It's young adult. It's Stephanie Garber's Caraval series. I really, I just finished the third book. I really liked it. There's now a sequel trilogy that she's released. And then this upcoming winter, she's releasing a little like novella going back to the original trilogy because it kind of picked up this past year it got picked up on book talk and now it's become a thing. So she's like, wait, people care about this after I've already written six books. All right. I'll write another, like, it's really, it was fun. It was really fun. It had like that hunger games feel without being the hunger games. Like it had that sort of they're playing games and there's this journey. And like, there's, it was, it was a really well-written book series. Well, you'll have to send me that link so that way I can read it and maybe we can start our book club this year and we can read books together. Book clubs. <laughs> Wild. Well, you did say in November you wanted a book club. All you I really do. want, I want a book club. <laughs> so All I want is a book club. Yeah, well, you can go down the rabbit hole with everyone else in the world. Um, so I guess we're at the hour mark and I have to ask oh, the damn. question. Be I know it has been and it, at the beginning of the recording, prior to press the record, we're like, ah, oh, we could fill an hour. We, we usually find a way to fill an hour. And then I'm like, holy shit, how long have we been recording? We've been recording for an hour. So um, I've got one last question. What's on the agenda for the next month for yourself? Um, I know you've been going to uh, Broadway, the, the Broadway, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. We have not gotten any new lights of Broadway reviews from Mr. Michael Nichols Page, but they could be coming soon. That's because the last two shows I saw, one is closing and one it was the final weekend of it being open. So I'm like, eh, it doesn't make sense. I will say spam a lot. Super great, super fun. I really enjoy it. Monty Python, spam a lot, love it. So, for those who don't know, Michael, you know he's lying through his fucking teeth. No, I really goes, did like it. I really did. <laughs> no, I I think part of spam a lot is if the actors can just let go and not give a fuck. And so it was so funny, and actually seeing an actor break on stage because uh, the guy playing. Lancelot also ends up playing Tim the Enchanter and the head knight who says me. Um, and so when they are no longer the knights who say me and they're the knights who say icky, icky, whatever, um, he started singing uh, this commercial jingle in the middle of it and sang the whole fucking jingle. And it apparently is the commercial that uh, James Monroe Englehart was, is King Arthur. Apparently he hates it. And so he just burst out laughing and he couldn't continue his lines because he couldn't stop laughing. And then he goes, I hate that fucking commercial. And he couldn't even finish saying the line because he has to repeat whatever uh, uh, the guy says. And so he starts repeating it and he gets it wrong. And then Alex Brightman goes, sorry, you have to repeat it identically. And like broke the king again. Uh, and so it was just the king kept breaking. Like everyone kept breaking. It's one of those shows that like you just have to go on there and have so fun because it's so stupid so it's i really stupid. like it yeah okay, okay, okay. and then we saw the hunt which peter dinklage was in the audience when i was there i was in line for the bathroom and i turned around and peter dinklage was there and i'm like it's, huh all right um that was that, you, you got a selfie though right no in the bathroom line 
You're gay and Italian. Isn't that the thing? In the bathroom line? You're no. gay and Italian. Isn't that the no. thing? <laughs> um, really great show. Uh, really incredible. I do hope it transfers because it was brilliant. But I also don't know if I want it to transfer because I think a bigger um, bigger theater is might ruin the intimacy of a small show. Because th- it was a... 13 cast show with just all it was was a glass house on stage that with the flick of a switch would go from see-through to fully like opaque and so it was really an intricate like set that we, you will lose the the intimacy of it in a big big stage um but yeah i am going in may may will be the next time i'm in the city after i finish cinderella and then you'll be back in June, from what I understand, because when we are trying to schedule the dates that, well, I, I know what dates I'm going to be in New York. And literally, we found out I'm literally going to be 20 minutes away from where Michael lives. Yes. <laughs> like, that is the weirdest thing that, I, like, I we did not plan this. <laughs> it's just the way that it works. So uh, the motel that I'm staying at looks very unique. That's because it's probably horse themed. Um, no, it's on a golf course. Oh, well, that's, yeah, it's Saratoga. <laughs> yeah, so um, to that. Yeah, the one I'm seeing in June, Cats the Musical. Oh, is Rebel Wilson going to be there? No, it's uh, being done as a reimagined version of Cats uh, that is taking place in a uh, ball, like a voguing ball. And so it's all like reimagined i cannot wait to see it i already love cats already love it cannot wait to see it with this sort of theming it's at the pelman arts center you know what's coming up as well what the met gala oh yeah that's in may too may 6 2024 so that should be fun everything you need to know Host are Zendaya, Jennifer Lopez, Bad Bunny, and Chris Hemsworth this year are the host of the Met Gala 2024. Oh, good times. What an interesting theme for that, too. What is the theme? Sleeping Giants, uh, fashion that, like, fashion concepts, fashion ideas, fashion things that we haven't seen, like, really, like, iconic outfits, like Marilyn Monroe's dress. That should have taken off, but didn't? No, no. It's like the really like iconic, like the white dress Marilyn Monroe wore, like things like that. Like the the designs that were so unique and like world renowned, but like you can't wear them because it's automatically going to be, well, you're just recreating this person's outfit. So, so are we going to see J-Lo in her original green dress that Sasha Colby now has? I think we're going to see people show up like, in full slumber party attire, which is going to be also wild. Because they're like, it's going to be a cool theme. I think it might have, it has the potential to be really incredible. Well, I'm looking forward to when we chat about that in April. or Yes, indeed. May, I should say. Um, Michael, it's always a pleasure to sit down with you and talk about the entertainment industry and go down this beautiful rabbit hole that you call crazy conspiracy theories that you are shocked that people are not on The Masked Singer, but actually, you know, are doing other things. But hey, she could still be on The Masked Singer. And she is. <laughs> she is. She is. Um, she's the goldfish. Anyone who's watching the British uh, Masked Singer, it's the goldfish. No, the U.S. mass singer. She's not even in the U.K. one. It's literally the U.S. one. It's so the whole the whole time you're talking about the mass singer. I was like, okay, I, I get that they have the mass singer in the in Britain, and now at the eleventh hour, two minutes before we're about to stop, you go, no, it's the U.S. one. Yeah, she, she's she's staying with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle right now. <laughs> she's staying with Harry, Harry and Meggie. I'm really sorry. I've had a lot of caffeine today. Today? Today. I'm just putting this out there. As you said, you're gay, you're Italian. You're and I'm Italian. highly caffeinated. <laughs> uh, Mike Nichols, it's always a pleasure to sit down with you and talk about the entertainment industry like a bull in the china shop because 
This was a hot mess of epic proportions, and I couldn't have asked for a better co-host to do this with every month. Until May, well, until May. <laughs> Skip A. Fuck April. Fuck. What, what's, oh, April wow. ever, what's April ever given to us? Um, always a pleasure. Until the end of April, we will chat then. Bye. Until then, so he has not been Mike Nichols, the EGOT winner. I'm not R&B singer Chris Brown. I make predictions like a fucking bat out of hell. He makes predictions that, because, you know, he knows the entertainment industry, hence why he's won four Oscars in a row. Maybe the fifth is going to be Chris Brown's year, but we won't find out until February of next year. Until then, this has been No, Not Them.